Hello, here we are. Sorry about the leaf blower in the background, but we'll ignore it. So we're going to look into more detail about uh, exponential functions, like what we started with in 7.1. Uh, in this part, we're going to look specifically at graphing. 7.2 is mostly about graphing. But first, we want to make clear what is an exponential function and what is not. So uh, yeah, if you can write it in this form, f of x equals a some number times b some other number to the power x. And the important thing is that the uh, variable x is the exponent itself. Uh, and the base of the exponent b is, is going to be some constant number, some number that has to be positive and it has to be not equal to 1. Uh, and we'll see why in a minute. And the uh, other number in front, the coefficient a, must not be 0, because otherwise it would just be f of x equals 0. So let's look at a few functions here. And we just want to answer yes or no, is each function an exponential function? So starting with a here, the trick is that the input variable is the exponent of the function. and it is true there. Uh, I would like to be able to actually write it in this form, uh, a times b to the x here. So to do that, uh, we need to figure out, we can see that the b looks like it's 2, but that's the base of the exponent, also known as the growth factor. But what is a? Well, you could just write it as 1 times 2 to the x. So because I can write this as 1 times 2, to the x, you've got your a is 1 and your b is 2. So yes, that works. Let's look at this one. Uh, here you do have a, an expression here with an exponent in it. The exponent is 1.5. So it, you want to say, yes, it's an exponential function. But then if you realize that the variable, the input variable that you plug in is supposed to be the exponent itself, not the base of the exponent. But there it is in the base. Not the exponent. The exponent itself is the constant 1.5. So uh, this is not an exponential function. This is a power function. And let's look at this function. h of y equals uh, 1 to the power y. And so you say, okay, uh, is the input variable y the exponent? Yes, it is. So that part's good. But you also have to have the base here, the uh, b is 1, but it says b is not supposed to be 1. You've got that problem there. So uh, this is not an exponential function. And you might say, well, what kind of function is it? Uh, because it does have the to the power. But then if you remember, the number 1 raised to any power is always going to be 1. So this is, you could also just write it in the form 4 times 1, or just 4. Uh, so this is a power function, or sorry, not a power function, a uh, constant function. So not really exponential uh, when you just have a 1 there. And by the way, if you have that b is negative, then weird things start happening. It ends up being undefined if you, if you have like negative numbers to the, like the power 1 half would be an imaginary number. So yeah, your, your base of the exponent has to be positive. And then looking at this one, uh, yeah, you can see that the input variable r is in the exponent here. But it's not really clear what the a and b is. So I might look at this and say, how can you find the a and the b by re whoops, uh, rewriting it uh, in, in an a times b to the x form? Uh, well, one thing you could do is separate the 1 over 15 part from the 1 over 3 to the r part uh, so that you can see maybe the base, not the base, sorry, the a 
is going to be equal to 1 over 15. And then you could write this to the, the power r here. You could also write that as the fraction 1 third to the power r. And that's the same thing because if you do the 1 to the power r, you just get 1 to the power r is just 1. So it doesn't change anything. And then 3 to the power r is this 3 to the power r here. So that's the same thing. Uh, so we can say that the value of a, yes, it's exponential, that a is 1 over 15, and the b is 1 over 3. Uh, so that's another kind of exponential function. All right, now here is a really important exercise for you to spend some time on. I really think it helps understand the concepts behind exponential functions. And this is the main idea for what you need to, to know about this section. So here's a table for you to fill in. Uh, and once you've filled in the, the y coordinates here, the results of doing 2 to the power x, then uh, graph the points that you get here. And then try to answer these questions. If you're not sure what I'm looking for when I say fill in the blanks, it's okay to make a guess. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and you'll see the answer after you've tried it and unpaused it in a minute. Here's my answers. So a few things. Uh, 2 to the power 0, well, anything to the power 0 is always 1. So that gets you this point here, which is actually the y-intercept is the point 0, 1. And uh, that is actually true about any uh, exponential function, that because we can write this function f of x as uh, 1 times 2 to the x, uh, then f of 0 is just going to be 1 times 2 to the 0, which is 1 times 1, and that's just going to be 1. And so no matter what number you have in place of that 1, that's what this result is going to be here. So if that was uh, any other function instead of 1, if this was... Uh, a times 2 to the x, or a times 2 to the 0, and a was just some other number, then the result would just be a. Uh, so anyways, uh, if x is something like negative 2, or any other largest negative number, then 2 to the negative 2 becomes 1 over 2 to the power positive 2, which ends up being like 1 divided by 4. And if x was a really big negative number, like, uh, I don't know, let's say like 2 to the power negative 100, then that would be 1 over 2 to the power 100, which is a tiny, tiny number. It's really, really close to zero. Um, it is smaller than your chances of winning the lottery. So that's, uh, that's what's happening over here. Uh, you get these small uh, negative numbers or sorry, small positive numbers as your y-coordinates when x is a big negative number. Then if x is a big positive number, that's what's happening like over on this part um, when you go out in this direction. Then 2 to the x, these results that we get here, numbers like 4 and 8, those are just going to get really, really big. So that's what's happening with this part of the graph. So that's the basic idea of uh, exponential functions and what their graphs look like. Let's try to summarize a few of these points about them in general. So to just summarize these points in general, I'll leave some of this exposed actually. Uh, what is the graph of f of x equals a times b to the x do? Uh, fill in the blank here about this y-intercept, and fill in the blank about the horizontal asymptote that it has. Uh, it is the x-axis that we're talking about. And the question that I'm asking you to 
answer here. Is this is the x-axis over here, this line, is that the line x equals 0 or y equals 0? So think about that for a second. It's okay to guess. And the answers will appear in just a moment. Oops. Here's these answers. Uh, the graph of f of x equals a times b to the x has a y-intercept at 0, a. That's uh, what we were talking about here. And this was the example of the y-intercept there, where the value of a was 1. And the horizontal asymptote is this line here is what we're talking about. Uh, and is that the line x equals 0 or y equals 0? Well, let's see. If you have a point on here, this is the point 1, 0. Here's the point 3, 0. Here's the point negative 2, 0. Uh, so the thing that is equal to 0 in each of these cases is y. Whoops. y0. Uh, so that's the line y equals 0. All right, tricky stuff. Uh, we'll do another example of graphing these in a second to make sure we understand, I mean in the, in the next video I meant to say, to make sure that we understand these concepts here. It'll be a little bit of a different kind of equation though.